Welcome back to the channel where we're continuing work on Project Unintended Spending, the 1987 Audi 5000 CS Turbo Quattro that I bought with a lot of issues. If you're just now joining the series, be sure to check the link in the description below for a playlist to see where the project started up to today. In this video, we're going to be rebuilding the very dilapidated front CV axles. Now I know I said in the previous video that we would be taking on the steering rack, but I've run into some parts and tool issues on that, and I hope to revisit that project very soon. Let's go over to the bench and see what we're dealing with. Over here are both the front CV axles, and these are a very common wear item on the Audi 5000 or the Type 44 or the Audi 200 series of chassis, and I'm not sure why these are so prone to cracking their outer axle boots, but clearly that has befallen these two axles here. And unfortunately, these were not recently torn boots. These have been torn for a while. The only saving grace is that there's still some grease still inside of there. So the hope to revive these is still strong with me. And the reason I feel like I have to revive these is because I'm actually being forced into having to revive these. Uh, rebuilt ones are simply not available anymore. And the reason I say rebuilt is because at least when you buy a rebuilt unit, you're getting an original VW Audi part, so the build quality is still very high. Obviously, at least I haven't been able to find brand new from VW Audi axles. Even if I could find them, I'm sure they'd be multiple hundreds of dollars, just a very eye-watering sticker shock, no doubt, even if they were available. So I'm not even going to expand my search to that. So rebuilding these is really the most economical and the most reliable option for me. The joints themselves don't really have a lot of perceivable slop in them, so I think we are able to save these. There's a lot of steps to kind of disassembling these. You gotta clean them very well, but most importantly, you need to have new boots and fresh grease and all of the various fittings so that you can reassemble them properly. So if we look on this end, this is the part that actually attaches to the output flange on the transmission and there's a small gasket in here that you do need to replace anytime you remove these from the transmission. So luckily that gasket is included with the new boot on the transmission side of the axle that I have here. There's your new gasket and this kit even comes with new mounting bolts which is really cool. They're original uh, 12 point style bolts like that. So I have two of those kits. One services that end of each axle. And over here I have the boots that are replacing the ones that are ripped right here, which this kit also comes with a new packet of grease, new band clamps, and a new axle nut, and a new circlip. So that is the parts that are needed to do this, but there is a lot of cleaning that lies within here. So let's start taking these apart.
All right, so that's the CV axle broken down into its individual components. Everything's kind of just wiped off. It's not necessarily cleaned. I'll do deeper cleaning here in a second, but you can see all of the outer balls are here, all the inner balls are here. I did put match marks on the cages in relation to the main hub portions because that is important to keep that orientation. We've got the circlip that keeps the inner part or the inner hub on the shaft and then we have the circlip that keeps the outer portion on the shaft and then our band clamps and our very worn CV boots. So that is everything taken apart. Now I'm going to go and clean up each one of these and paint them up. I'm not going to get that on video. We'll see here in a second. All right, everything is cleaned up and freshly painted. So this was pretty rusty before, masked it off. Wanted to make sure I didn't paint the ends because those are still, you want to keep those raw so they can slip on those splines pretty well. But everything in between, it's going to look really nice when on the car. These are all cleaned up. I just wiped these down. I didn't use any brake parts cleaner because I didn't want anything to prevent the grease from working properly. But uh, yeah, all this is looking good. I did mask this off and then I shot it with some clear coat on the outside so that it kept that original shiny look but kind of staves off any corrosion that's going to happen in the future. And then this cleaned up really nicely. Masked these ends off and shot the middle with some paint so it'll look good once it's reassembled. Then we have our new boots here. This will look really great once it's all put back together. It's basically like a brand new axle. After cleaning it all up, there's no wear that concerns me necessarily. I mean, there's some minor shiny spots, but I mean, that's what you can expect with any sort of axle with miles on it. So actually, there wasn't a ton of dirt that had gotten into these axles yet, and there was still enough grease to kind of lubricate all of the balls. The balls don't really have any scratches or pitting, so everything's salvageable. I'm very impressed by this. I think going the rebuild route was definitely the right option in the end. Got plenty of grease here, some new band clamps, so this is now ready to go back together.
And there we are, two freshly rebuilt CV axles. You would never guess that these were the ones that came off the car. They look nearly new. It's amazing what some fresh paint, grease, and new boots can do for some used parts. And with that, the video isn't actually over. There's one more step we need to do, and that's clean up the flanges that are on the transmission. We need to pull them out, clean them up, and also replace the seals in the transmission that the flanges go into. So let's get to it. All right, so I've got the new seal seated in there. That was relatively straightforward replacement, and I've lubricated the lips and inner channel with some multi-purpose grease, as the factory service manual recommends. Um, I just used some Sil Glide on that. It's rubber safe. And then over here, check out this heat shield that protects the inner CV boot from the downpipe exhaust heat. Obviously, it's caked full of grease and dirt, but there's actually a three pin connector pigtail stuck in here that someone has clearly lopped off. I don't know what that was used for, but <laughs> apparently it wasn't needed because the car otherwise runs just fine. So I'm going to get this cleaned up as well as the output flange here. So thankfully there's no scoring on the seal lip there. And then it's just grease that needs cleaned up otherwise it's in good shape and the old seal actually in really good shape it's still plenty pliable i wasn't sure if this was leaking or if it was just remnants of the power steering rack and i'm starting to believe that it was just the power steering rack because there's still grease in the inner channel there this is still supple rubber this was this was fine but when you get that much dirt around the seal lip it's just a matter of time before it's going to cause it to fail. So definitely worth the preventative maintenance. All right, got these cleaned up and slightly repainted along just kind of the external surfaces. It looks much better. And this heat shield, I hit it with some gold spray paint to kind of give it that cadmium look that it originally would have had. I swear I'm not trying to turn into a 90s church lady by just painting everything gold, but there were a lot of cadmium plated parts on this car. And from afar, it might look close. Either way, it's better than rust colored, which it was before. It's now a uniform color at the very least. All right, well, let's get this thing put back in the car.
And with that, that is the front CV axles rebuilt as well as the output flange seals replaced. Slowly but steadily, we are making progress on this old neglected Audi 5000. That's all we have for this video. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all again in the next one.